All right, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the King George County School Board meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. Please be seated. And we will begin this evening with some recognition. So Dr. Boyd would like to recognize the maintenance department. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this evening, we have the distinct honor of recognizing King George County Schools maintenance department. So as many of you know, I've uh, had the opportunity to sit in a different seat or different seats the last couple weeks, last couple months. And uh, with that opportunity, it's provided me an advantage to see from a different angle. And uh, I have to say that in seeing from that angle, uh, the maintenance folks that work in our school division do an unbelievable job. Um, they are certainly not defined by hours. In fact, this morning, I think uh, in the six o'clock hour, I rolled up to the school board office and Mr. Cliff was already cutting grass out there. Uh, and it's oftentimes, regardless of the time of the weekend, the, the time of the day, uh, through the middle of the night, these individuals are, are, are working to hold together the fabric of our school division and uh, certainly appreciate that and wanted to take this opportunity to publicly thank you guys for your efforts. Uh, certainly like the post office, you're not slowed down by the rain, hail, sleet, heat, whatever it may be. Uh, last week we had a heat advisory and these gentlemen worked extremely hard to hold our school uh, division together and move us forward. So we want to thank you guys, and I'd like to recognize you guys individually. When I call your name, please come forward. Mr. Kenny Stone, not with us. <laughs> Sounds like a perfect plan. All right. Thank you. All right, Mr. Donald Wyant, come on up. Picture, yeah. Jody Dean. Roger Samuels. Understood, understood. Mr. Thomas Bird. <laughs> Mr. Tom Royer, also, I don't see Tom. All right, got him. Mr. Robert Cliff. And finally, last but not least, Mr. Gary Cliff. Thank you all. Thank you guys very Thank much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Boyd. At this time, we will move on to public and employee employee comments. Do we have any we do today?
All right, thank you. All right, so we will begin public employee comment and I'll ask that you come to the podium and state your name, your um, election district and your relation to the school district. And then I ask um, in order to afford everyone an opportunity to speak that you limit your comment to three minutes. So first we have Brady O'Donnell. Thank you. Working at a height disadvantage. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, first, I wanted to thank you all for the opportunity. Um, my name is Brady O'Donnell. Um, I am a parent. Um, my relationship to the school is complicated. I'll start there. Um, I actually uh, recently moved to King George. Um, my husband and I have been working at um, Heritage Hall for over a year now um, and just absolutely fell in love with the area, um, started going to the farmer's market and um, checked out some churches and we decided that we wanted to move to the area. Um, in June of this year, we purchased a home on Trigger Lane. Um, with a King George address and a King George zip code, um, and then promptly found out very shortly after that that our house is actually, in fact, in Westmoreland County. Um, and as such, our boys would not be able to attend King George County Schools. Um, we have daycare established in King George. Um, we work just up the road um, and we were really excited to be able to you know, drop our boys off at school and, and head into work and um, avoid the bus situation. And um, after doing some um, poking around and checking out some of the policies, um, I learned that there is a specific policy um, that actually mentions trigger lane explicitly um, and I have attached that um, at the, the second page of the documents that I gave you guys. Um, that policy was established in 2008 um, and it grandfathered any students that were attending King George County Schools as of the 2008-2009 school year. Um, but after that point, anybody who um, was a new um, attendee was um, required to register with Westmoreland County Schools. Um, I'm here today uh, to ask you all to consider repealing um, that addendum. Um, it's the JEC addendum to the school admissions policy. Um, I have never seen a specific road mentioned and I looked through the other um, information and there's no other roads specifically mentioned in the King George area. Um, I know Trigger Lane's probably a little bit unique because literally our mailboxes are in King George, um, which is why we have that zip code, um, but our homes are in Westmoreland, um, and it's all of the homes on the street. There's a total of 14. Um, three of those homes currently have school-aged children in them. Um, one of the families does have their children att attend Westmoreland County Schools. Um, one of the families elected to drive an hour outside of the area for their daughter to attend a private school. Um, and then there's us. Um, I have a son, uh, he's um, a, a son that's three uh, and then a six-year-old um, rising first grader. Um, and I would be very interested in him attending um, King George schools. So um, I do have a lot of neighbors that are interested in it as well. Overall, just um, I'm asking that you guys consider looking at the policy. Um, I know that there are some communities or some school boards um, in surrounding areas that have um, a, um, let me make sure I get the word right, um, an easement of a mile or so on the county line. Um, some counties, um, I came from Orange County, they have a variance option for people who um, have work and uh, daycare established in the county but live outside of the county. Um, and then I know that there are other, some other counties um, where I worked in the schools in um, Newport News area that do allow a um, out of county tuition option. So those are just some of the things that I'd found when I was doing my research um, and maybe you guys could may consider as a, um, a resolution um, in um, looking at this policy. 
Thank you guys so much for your time and I hope you have a good evening. Thank you, Ms. O'Donnell. All right, Mr. Vance, do we have any comment online? No. All right. Okay, we will move on this evening. Do we have any changes to the agenda? No. All right, so we'll move along. So we will begin with a presentation, um, an update on student and staff wellness. Dr. Boyd. All right, I'm gonna switch hats real quick. Come on down here. Give you guys an update on our student and staff wellness. Uh, as you guys remember, uh, social emotional learning was the topic of, uh, of the month and of the last couple months, and it's certainly a topic that's on the mind of many in our community. So we want to, uh, in the effort of being fully transparent, uh, we wanted to make sure that we updated everybody on where we are in that process, what our plan is moving forward, and how we plan on going into the school year uh, with this initiative. Okay, so uh, if you guys remember, King George County Schools was awarded a competitive grant to be used to support a, a division social and emotional uh, programs or coordinator. Uh, I won't go into the details on what was awarded, but uh, based on this uh, allotment, we employed one full-time uh, student and staff well-being coordinator. Uh, this individual will be in charge of uh, the uh, requirements under this grant. Uh, we will also, uh, with this money, afford a lead teacher from each school uh, that will be a stipend amount of $500, and then the remainder of that money will be used for fees and materials associated with uh, professional development for the coordinator. Okay? All right. The student and staff well-being coordinator will lead the planning, continuous improvement, and implement, implementation of a multi-tiered system of support for student and staff well-being. So it's important to recognize here that this individual who, who uh, we have hired at this point is going to come in and in this first year, this grant year, uh, this, this will be a year of analysis and evaluation. Uh, this will be, uh, uh, the, the task of this year will be to take a look at many of the programs that are already used in King George County Schools. For example, at the high school, we have used the Renaissance program for many years. Uh, at the elementary school, particularly Potomac, we use PBIS. Uh, and there's a number of other programs that we use in the division right now that address social standards and emotional standards. Uh, so that individual will come in, take a look at the programs that we currently use, assess the efficacy of those programs, and then ultimately figure out uh, how we can gel those programs together into a division-wide uh, social emotional uh, program across the division. So more specifically, the coordinator will lead the development of a division student and staff well-being plan uh, assist schools in the development of a plan that focuses on uh, positive school climate, behavior support, social skill development, restorative practices, and behavior inter intervention processes. So it's important to note here uh, that this individual is going to take a look at the current practices, as I, as I mentioned, really take a look at uh, the culture and the climate of the building. As, as you all know, the topic of safety and security is one that is very important to schools across the country right now as we open our doors again in the fall. Uh, this individual is gonna take a look at a lot of the practices that we use uh, to forge strong and positive relationships with our students and our staff in the building. Uh, as I said, safety and security is gonna be number one on everyone's list coming back into the doors uh, when school starts. And I can tell you really as a former principal, you know, there's a lot of bells and whistles out there for school security but there's no, effect, there's no strategy more effective than forging strong relationships with our students, making sure we know them and they know us, and we have a strong bond between each other. Uh, so that's what this individual will really focus on doing moving forward. This position, oh, sorry, can you go back to one? This position will work closely with the administrators at the school, school counselors, uh, to provide strategic planning, professional learning, coaching, and technical assistance to the school. So again, this individual in the first year is not working with students on uh, rolling out these uh, uh, social emotional learning standards to students. What this individual is doing in the first year is working with administrators and counselors to figure out a strategic plan, professional learning goals, coaching opportunities, and assistance in implementing that plan in the following school year. 
Thank you. So again, as I mentioned before, with the Renaissance program and PBIS at the elementary school level, we're going to build on the, our current initiatives uh, and our related programs while also including all stakeholder groups uh, in the development. So this is an important thing to note, that as we work our way through this process in the first year, as we begin to meet with administrators and those individuals working for the school division, there's also going to be a layer of coming back to our community, coming back to um, uh, a committee or groups of individuals in our community and discussing what we've learned about social emotional learning in the school, wellness in our school, figuring out how it fits into our community, King George County, uh, and then using that information to pull together a, an entire program at the end of the process at the conclusion of that first year. Uh, this individual will assess where we are, as I mentioned, and the need for development uh, and access to resources moving forward. It's important to mention because this is a great source of data and as a former high school principal, uh, some of this data here would be things that we would use every Monday morning. We would get together and meet, we would collect data and discuss data on our discipline in the building, we would discuss graduation rates, grades, attendance of students, and we would disaggregate that data to see if we could find any trends or themes going on in the school right now, former high school principal at the high school, but this happens across every school building, and see if we can figure out really kind of the, the climate or the temperature of the building based on that data that we get pretty rapidly every week. So that's what this individual will be responsible for doing. It's important to note that this individual is gonna foster collaboration across uh, the school board office. It's gonna ensure alignment, or this individual is gonna ensure alignment uh, and communicate with the district. Um, about everything that's related to student and staff well-being move, moving forward. And then finally, at the end uh, of this year uh, of evaluation and analysis, we're going to adopt a framework that will emphasize consistent language, consistent guidance, development and resources, really across all five of our schools. Right now, a lot of this stuff is going on. We do a lot of this uh, uh, positive behavior support, uh, recognizing students for, for achievements, uh, making sure that we pay attention to the well-being of our teachers and our students throughout the school day and throughout the school year. All of these things are going on right now in pockets across our school division. This individual is going to take a look at all of those pieces, pull it together, uh, put it into a cohesive framework, and then move together with a plan uh, that will represent our school division and also solicit feedback from staff, families, and community community partners in the process. So as you see, uh, we'll evaluate and analyze, we'll come up with a plan, and then we'll make, make sure throughout that ent entire process that we keep our community partners, our families, our parents, our students in the fold uh, when we discuss how we move forward with this initiative. Any questions? Go ahead, Dr. Mr. Bush. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry. I'm assuming it sounds like that this person is going to deal with the division as a whole, not with groups or individual students. This is looking at the entire division and assessing the vision. They're not going to be working with groups of students or will they? Absolutely correct. Yes. So in this first year, when we're uh, reviewing and evaluating, this is going to be a holistic look. And they're certainly going to look at uh, those areas of data that I discussed, discipline, attendance across the entire division. Uh, but in this first year of, of the De developing that large plan, we will not be in the in the position where we're um, meeting with specific student groups and things of that nature. And that person, I'm assuming, next year would, with whatever recommendations have after going to you, then you'd bring that to us before we would implement anything. Yes, sir. Right. Um, one more question: the word uh, restorative is so nebulous. Could you explain what does meant what is meant here when you say restorative? Sure. As, as a former uh, high school principal, what this is, is typically when you have uh, an infraction of some type. Uh, what this is, is really a form of conflict management. Uh, so when you have individuals that have a difference of opinion or you have a, a, a wrong that you want to right, uh, you bring those individuals together, you have a conversation and you see if you can uh, restore that, that um, uh, the well-being of those individuals back to the place it was prior to that event. So it's policies related to that restorative behavior. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, it's also judicial practices as well. The, the juvenile court uses restorative practices in their efforts. That's, yeah. I, I don't know. 
Yep, go ahead, Ms. Hoff. Uh, I am hoping that we're not throwing our baby out with our bathwater too soon and that our PBS programs will continue. Those are going, we're, yeah, those are moving forward as planned. Uh, there's great stuff there. That, ba <laughs> that baby and bathwater is all good. Thank yeah, you. so that's, that's staying in place. That's, that, those were my babies yeah. in that bathwater. <laughs> that's so, right. So I, I, and I'll be very eager to see the data that we've accumulated it. And uh, Dr. Cutright is our resident expert in, in PBIS these days. So um, I, I'm eager to hear how we look at it. Dr. Cartwright, do you have any questions? Just a comment. Basically, what you're looking at is interpersonal skills with students, conflict mediation, being able to settle conflicts, positive reinforcement. That's basically what you're talking about with the Renaissance program and the PBIS. And you're just putting all the data together in, in one area. Absolutely. So you can analyze the data. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rolls, any? I think my question might be affecting some by the previous answers. So in reading about SEL previously, I understood the idea was it kind of permeated how we taught all the subjects to try to make it better across the board. Uh, but at this point, we're saying we don't even have the plan yet, so we can't really comment on that just yet, or? Yeah, and just, that at? So, so it's not gonna be how we teach all of the subjects. We're not gonna infuse SEL into English and math. It's really of a more holistic picture of the entire educational process of the entire school, uh, which is the way that we've done Renaissance and the way that we've done PBIS in the past. So it's really just kind of a whole school culture vision of how we move forward in teaching our students social practices that are acceptable in large groups and how to familiarize themselves with their emotions when working in large groups and working individually. All right, I guess next question is, I was looking at the you know, 2020 General Assembly put out a house bill that basically I think was the impetus for all this. And in the document they put out with all the guidelines, which like I said, I, mean, I guess I'm a little bit confused, but you said it's not part of English and math, but then it's a whole school vision. So it kind of seems like isn't you know, English and math part of the whole school, but. It's it's a it's a big part of what we do. Academics yeah. is most importantly the, the the head of the sphere, as Dr. Benson used to always say. But I can tell you, living communally mm -hmm. in that in all of our school buildings is is just the fabric of what we do. So yes, we do school, um, but learning how to cohabitate and live together and having 1,500 uh, people in the high school at one time. That's, that is very much school in itself as well, outside of the academic responsibilities that our students and staff have. Okay, so would you see that, how it's be taught then? It wouldn't be in other classes? It would be like its own class or? No, it's just, it's it's more about, um, if I reference again the Renaissance program, it's, it's more about, or, or PBIS, it's more about um, infusing it. Uh, and really, you know, I keep mentioning those two programs. Even back when I went to school in, in elementary school, we had something called the five C's and it was care, cooperation, common sense. It's just kind of the, the moral fabric and the, and the way that we learn how to, like I said, cohabitate in large groups and, and live together harmoniously. So it's, um, it's announcements that we will make, it's initiatives that we'll have throughout the school day, it's recognition of individuals, it's making sure that we pause sometimes to recognize our staff for things that they've done. It's really just the climate uh, and, and the culture of the building. You know, as an administrator, as a school board member, every time we walk into a school building, we feel a certain way. It's really how we push forward or we create that feeling of how it feels to come into a school building. And if you, you know, every school building you walk in feels a little differently in that way. And I think that uh, these, this concept or these ideas are how you in, uh, ensure that you get a, a warm feeling uh, and a positive feeling when you, when you enter a school building. So I'll, I'll go back to the document from the uh, General Assembly. And in there they said, uh, local school boards may choose to adopt all or portions of the Virginia cell guidance standards as part of their local policies and or use them as guidance as they implement cell, uh, cell programming based on the needs of their community. So reading that now, it sounds like that's maybe 
NA until they get the plan, and we we discuss that and vote on that. Correct. Yeah. So we're we're certainly reviewing those standards. We've taken a look at them uh, at this point. Uh, I couldn't. It's so early in the in the in the process to tell you uh, which ones we're running with. I mean, there's quite a few. I mean, and they list them by grade level. So. Uh, it would be, be way early to let you know which direction we're going in as far as adopting which of those standards and, and which ones we're not adopting. Right. So, I mean, of course, talk to the local school board so you don't need our input until the mm -hmm. plan's been worked on is what you think would be the best flow? I think so. And also in making sure that our community is aware of where we are in the process and that they've got some feedback in uh, what they consider to be an appropriate approach moving forward. Okay. And last question. I have heard from multiple uh, constituents that uh, there's a concern that SEL could be a way to get critical race theory you know, into the classrooms. So, I mean, what would you say to those folks to address their concerns? That That's not the case. So uh, if you do review, the, even if, if you take a look at deeply into those standards that are on BDOE right now, there's not a mention of critical race theory uh, at all. Uh, it's it's certainly something uh, I, I know that 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 that's kind of been thrown into this mix, and there's a there's a number of other issues too that have been thrown into social emotional learning. But I would encourage everybody in our community just to go back to the, your basic fundamental knowledge of what social learning is and emotional learning is, and the values that we should find in that. Um, there's a number of issues out there right now that are very, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, divisive. Uh, and, we, and we certainly are not uh, trying to latch on to anything that's divisive. We're trying to move our school division forward and do good things by our students uh, and, and staff members in the building. So our approach is to focus on those social and emotional skills uh, that we pull out of this year of analysis uh, and move forward in hoping to, to improve the culture of the building. Thank you. Yes, sir. I, I think we also need to say, and I, I apologize, Mr. Bush, um, that all of these practices, before they ever enter discussion, have been part of the best practices of the Department of Education, of the, the Virginia Department of Education. Uh, they've all been vetted numbers of times before they're ever introduced to a school setting. Uh, and this has been happening for uh, many years, and we all are pleased to see when our children receive kindness awards. And we're all pleased to see when children will step up and, and intervene in a bully situation. And those are the things that get the teachers through the day. The educators have to depend on parents to teach their children, but we have to ensure that those children come and use the skills that those parents want to teach. And there's not CRT intervening. Um, Dr. Boyd, thank you. Um, I was, let's see, I had two points that are, I would have more orderly thought process if I had my laptop in front of me, which I don't. So anyway, um, but so you mentioned PBIS, so the Positive Behavior Intervention Program System, whatever it is. I'm you know familiar with that since my kids are at Potomac and I enjoyed the communal pies we all got to the face as a part of that program, so that's awesome. Can you, um, I'm not familiar with the Renaissance program, can you hit on like the highlights of that, how that works? Yeah, that's, that's uh, so really uh, the easiest way that I've heard the Renaissance program described is for the last hundred years, we have always recognized uh, and put our student athletes on pedestals um, with letter jackets and trophies and everything else. The easiest way I heard the Renaissance program described, described is we take those uh, same initiatives, those same approaches, uh, and, and we infuse it into all of the other things that school encompasses. So uh, academics, kindness, um, attendance, punctuality, all of those things. We, we in fact we yeah, okay. do we do a we spend a lot of time trying to invent other ways to recognize what the Renaissance program calls camouflage students, students that for lack of a better way of put it, just blend in sometimes. And we're trying to pull them out through this program, make sure we know who they are, because again, it goes back to that importance of the relationship. Know who they are, recognize them, make them feel at home in our school division, uh, and really get them to a place where they're very comfortable learning. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and then another um, another question. I so the when you hit on the restorative piece of things, I seem to recall from like maybe two years ago. I forget it was at the beginning of COVID. There was I think a note of like King George Elementary had been in at a part of like a a pilot program in 2019 or something for like a restorative justice something. I can't remember all the details, right. and I feel like it got put on hold during COVID perhaps. And then anyway, I was I forget, maybe this is like that would be. We could evaluate it as a part of it, or I, I've been meaning to ask for like an update on what was the outcome of that, and I hadn't gotten around to it. I can look into okay. what that possibly would stand, mm -hmm. but it's certainly one of those practices that would be uh, explored in this next year. Right, right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bush. Just a last comment, just to make it very clear. I was listening to Mr. Rolls and others. This first year, they're not going to be implementing anything. They're going to be simply gathering data, gathering information. Um, and then presenting that to you, which will come to us. So even fears or whatever, this first year, there would be no need for any of that because all they're doing is evaluating and gathering data. Absolutely correct. All right, any further comments, questions? All right, thank you, Dr. Boyd. I have one oh. <laughs> okay. And I, this may have just slipped my mind. Is there already somebody in that position? I am sorry. Yeah, I thought there was, I just didn't. We don't yeah, actually, we've hired Ms. Beverly Lemons, who has a, okay. an amazing resume, and I think she's going to do a wonderful job. I thought we had. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Well, now that you asked that, I do have one more question. Because that, that was something that's unclear. So you need to hire somebody who's going to facilitate SEL. But it's kind of a, I mean, Ms. Hawk mentioned that it, we've been doing similar things a long time, but of course, these standards were just written. The deadline was in 2021. So how is someone qualified to teach SEL? I mean, I, I mean it's not well-established you know discipline like mathematics right so so again there's already a number of great practices that already exist and there's a number of great practices that already exist in our school division what this individual is going to do is is analyze evaluate and pull all of those practices together figure out collectively with our community with our staff how all that looks that's a huge job in itself um, but then pull together that in an organized framework so that uh, we have a King George County Schools initiative for this moving forward and not a King George High School and a Potomac Elementary School and a Sealson Elementary School initiative, which have all been great, uh, but we're going to pull it all together uh, into one cohesive framework, which at the end of the day really benefits our students because if they matriculate from kindergarten through high school and they're hearing the same language, understanding the same concepts, uh, it's really going to benefit them as they work their way out of high school, understanding those same lessons with the same verbiage. Right. I guess it, the question was more, what kind of background were we looking for in, in somebody to fill this role? Because, I mean, if I'm looking for a math teacher, I, I know what they need, what qualification, qualifications they need for that. Mm -hmm. so how you decide if someone's qualified for this job? Is it a little, a little bit more um, nebulous, this position? Well, I mean, we kind of describe what we're hoping for, and this individual has a background in, in counseling and social work, uh, has quite an extensive resume, so we think we've got the right person for the job. And I look forward to you hearing from her. Yeah, I mean, well, not challenging that, just useful to understand what, what qualifications we're looking for, so okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thank you, Dr. Boyd. Thank you. Okay, so next this evening we have before us on our consent agenda for consideration, Minutes from the June 27th, 2022 regular meeting and minutes from the July 14th, 2022 special meeting. Do we have a motion? I move to approve the minutes from the June 27th regular meeting and the minutes from the July 14th special meeting as presented. I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Your votes I motion carries. And next for consideration, we have our action items. We have a number of policy manual updates as listed that were reviewed at our last meeting. I won't read through them all unless there are comments. Do we have a motion? I move that we accept the action action items. Um, and I will try to go slowly so Ms. Brinko can stay caught up with me. Um, policy manual update CLA, reporting acts of violence and substance abuse. 
EB, School Crisis Emergency Management and Medical Emergency Response Plan, EBB, Threat Assessment Teams, EFB, Food Services, IC slash ID, School Year, IE, Moment of Silence, IGAE slash IGAF, Health Education slash Physical Education, IGAG, Teaching About Drugs, Alcohol, and Tobacco, JED, Student Absences, Excuses, and Dismissals, JHCD, Administering Medicines to Students, JHCF, Student Wellness, JJAF, Student Athlete Sudden Cardiac Arrest, Policy KKK, KKA, Service Animals in Public Schools, Policy KNAJ, Relations with Law Enforcement Authorities, and Policy KNB, Reports of Missing Children. I'm sorry, did you move to approve those? I did. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. And can I ask a question about one of them? That was my any discussion. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. It's a small question uh, for Dr. Boyd, I guess. And I'm sorry, but as I read this one about KKA, the service animals of public schools, sorry, it may be ridiculous, but it says we're requiring for them to have all the proper vaccine, um, the proper shots. I'm thinking, did we not do that before? I would assume so. Just to, so, when I saw that, I'm saying, you mean we never did that? We didn't require for them? I mean, this is just updated. Policy. No, I know. Okay. And Virginia Department of Health stepped in to say that. Right. But why is we should have always had that? Anyway, that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> that's my point. Maybe there are new vaccines. I think it's specifically that they're vaccinated against rabies. Right. Perhaps it was it. I seem to recall that from the past, but, but perhaps it was just vaccinated and they're specifying rabies or something. Okay. Because I just wanted to call out right. It's, that they, it's specifically rabies, not the, not all vaccinations. So there was. I like, know, but rabies is a big one, obviously. And I was just thinking they weren't vaccinated before. That just seems odd. It might be a clarification. Regardless, they're now going to be required. So that's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Moving on to our discussion items, we'll begin with the Dairy Alliance Grant. Dr. Boyd. Sorry, this is my first big packet. <laughs> Doesn't have a page number, but it's this one. Okay, so we come to you this evening. The Dairy Alliance Grant is a non-profit non funded by dairy farm families of the Southeast. Uh, they work diligently with, with dairy farmers, schools, sports teams, health professionals, local, organiza local organizations, state leaders, the media, and the public to promote uh, dairy foods and knowledge about the dairy industry. Uh, and then their, their efforts center in eight states, one of which is Virginia. Uh, I won't read all of this, but uh, this grant would afford the King George High School uh, the cost of a three sp sprout. Spout. Sprout. Yeah, thank you. Let's say sprout, though. <laughs> I read sprout the first time, too. Milk dispenser for the high school, which will hold two five gallon bags of chocolate milk and one five gallon uh, bag of white milk. And my recommendation would be to approve the Dairy Alliance grant in the amount of $4,563. All right. Thank you, Dr. Boyd. Any questions? So at the risk of sounding like a total grouch, I'm just curious why why two of them are chocolate and only one is white? <laughs> They're like, no. only want everybody to drink chocolate milk all the time? Yeah, supply and demand thing. I'm sure. No oat okay. milk? A coconut milk? Nice. Uh, yeah. What are the lactose-free students going to do? <laughs> Real. No, I wanted the same thing as Hawk. Um, yep. So is there not one in the school now? That has a, a, a milk product other than dairy? 
Or well, well that oh, yes, no, there's and not. also what's the so is it currently like this will be like you know cafeteria style or like obviously cafeteria? I'm like yeah. I remember going to college right and having the spout versus the carton. So is that the difference? Correct. Yeah. So traditionally you would have gone into the milk uh, chest container, picked out your carton of milk. Now this is a milk dispenser that has yeah. the with like for a glass or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So to Miss Hawk's point though, are there so we moved to that? Um, like are they like? I mean, obviously, kids can drink water. Are there other dairy-free options? Uh, I'm not sure. I can look into you that. I'd be happy to. Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other? Any other question? Would be so. This is just totally no strings attached. Here's free money. As far as I understand it, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Hard to find. That's what. That's unusual. Because they want you to buy milk from them. Buy milk, right? Um, okay. Any other? Comments, questions? All right, so you, um, I assume you bring that back to us at our next meeting, Dr. Boyd, is there a time sensitive element to that? Uh, no, you, we can bring it back on the next meeting. Okay, all right. So next are the variable air volume dampers. Okay, so uh, the variable VAV dampers at uh, King George Elementary School, uh, if you guys remember some time ago, uh, the air handlers at uh, King George Elementary School were replaced. Now, further down that line uh, of our airflow in that system, uh, we have what we call VAV dampers. VAV dampers are um, controlled by the thermostat, uh, and they uh, control the airflow and also the quality of the air that enters the school building and, and really, as a result, every classroom in King George Elementary School. So the current VAV dampers uh, came uh, originally with the building, so, so they have uh, lived their full life. Uh, and uh, with the new air, air handlers on the roof, the next phase of that process so that we have uh, much better airflow and air quality uh, in the school building, in King George Elementary School, uh, would be to replace the thermostats and the air uh, dampers uh, in the school building. Uh, my, my recommendation would be to approve the funds not to exceed $210,000 and we would use the uh, fiscal year 23 school construction funds to cover the cost associated with this uh, construction project. All right, thank you, Dr. Boyd. Any questions? Uh, yes, Dr. Dr. Boyd, uh, is, is this um, to be completed before the next two weeks or is it ongoing project? I think it'll be an ongoing project. Yeah, it's, it's quite an extensive project. Sounds like it. But also about that, so this is coming from the construction funds that we basically use to offset some of our debt service to be able to spend it on other things. So how does that affect that whole plan where we're going to spend $1 million next year and we have a $2 million grant, we're going to spend, not a grant, but it's $2 million from the state. If we're going to spend a $1 million next year, then a $1 million in 24. Mm -hmm. So how does this affect that plan since it's 200 k out of that, right? Correct. Yeah, so this would, this would um, you know, use that $1 million that we had allotted this year for construction funds. And then we would displace the cost from, you know, other expenses that we had in our in our operating budget this year. Okay. And so, so we know what we're taking the money from then, because that money was already allotted to things in the budget to pay for them. That we were counting that as, as money in the budget, right? I'm not sure I understand your question. We had an extra million dollars from the state to cover all our expenses this year from the construction funds, and so and we had a list of everything that we wanted staff everything you know and, and that money that million dollars we're counting on to pay for that to make things balance is really understood so if we take two hundred thousand dollars out of that it seems like we gotta yank it for some something to make everything balance out again so what we've done is taken a look at our current operating budget uh there's certain there's certain items in our current operating budget that um have been approved or earmarked to be able to be spent uh, technology expenses construction expenses debt service uh, from previous projects, which we were using for Honeywell, uh, we're we're pulling all of those expenses out of our operating budget, which would have been money we would have would have expended in our operating budget, and now using the construction funds to to to, to use on those projects. Okay, Dr. so Boyd, was if we're making those adjustments to the budget, I think I would like to see those specifically before we approve. Yes, sir. Was this an expected um, expenditure? I mean, did you know a few months ago that this was going to be there? Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we'll come here to try to help. So this was this is an opportunity. There's a grant um, from the state uh, 
foreign of our money in the state. So there's a required match from the locality. So the matching component of this that makes this project whole fits nicely with the um, the allowable uses of this new construction funds that are part of the operating budget. You have greater flexibility with your ESSER funds that you already have, both ESSER two and three, there's still funding remaining there. So um, I believe the prudent thing then is to utilize the rather limited flexibility with construction funds to fund the local match required of this project as you did with, um, or as you will do with like the Honeywell, the 15 year energy management program. So you're utilizing the construction funds uh, along the guidelines that are that are associated with those funds, but you also have greater flexibility. So I think Mr. Roll's question is, if we use this amount for this match, then how do we make up uh, that in the operating budget? And in that case, you can turn to the ESSER funds that you already have, since you have greater flexibility, to then uh, lean on those funds for any, any items that uh, you know, may have been included in the operating budget that still need to be funded. So that's really the, um, yeah, that makes sense financially. I, I agree. That sounds great. And it's, this is a perfect um, area to spend those funds because of the matching. Grant. My question, though, was, was this expected? In other words, did we know that this was going to be a need that we had to take care of? Oh, yeah. The, the VIP box? Yes. It's been an ongoing need. And we've replaced, you know, one here or there, you know, as we've been able to do. But really, the, the remaining VAB boxes need to be replaced because they are original. Okay. Uh, and they will then, uh, if it weren't to be funded this way, it would undoubtedly be a CIP. Item. Okay, that was my question. So okay. Instead of asking the county for more money to do this project, okay. I think you know, leveraging it within our, our... So we knew this was coming. It was just a matter of now we have funds that we can do this with, and so we don't need to wait until next year, year after we, we need to do this now. Okay. Right. Yeah, the very same way you would do this project. I understand. Well, I don't know. You want your address, but um, just a question about that. You said ESSER. So this right now reads the uh, superintendent, superintendent's recommendation is to approve the use of FY23 school construction funds to fund the cost of this. And it also doesn't make any mention of a grant. So is there, can this uh, proposal be clarified a little bit to include all that? I mean, I understand it, right? I mean, which the grant was. I think that the agenda item is written. Certainly, you can you can clarify, you know, when you uh, when you go to approve it, if you'd like to, and the uh, and memorialize that in the uh, revised agenda um, cover sheet that you're reading from there. Uh, the, the intention there is to communicate that the local match part of it. The grant has already been distributed by the state. The grant money. It's the local match then uh, that was addressed by the, the, uh, the cover sheet there. But you you could certainly we can go back and amend the wording in that to include both parts of the funding stream for that, if that's your question. All right. So I mean, essentially it's going to get covered by, you mentioned ESSER, There's, so ESSER is going to cover part of that? No. No. Oh, this agenda item? Uh, right. It's no. Not. No, you'll, you'll have a combination of state ARP grant money for this purpose, and then the local match will be pulled from the, uh, the new school construction aspect of the operating budget. But but not but the ESSER would could come in to to replace any operating budget um, funds. Um, I think your point was if we're taking this from the operating budget. So I guess we're looking at it because it's kind of a shell game. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's not a game. I'm not saying. <laughs> well, it's a game. well, I mean, yeah. But you're saying. you're correct. You know, I would I would I would describe it as you're utilizing the funds that are available to you within the guidelines that are being. That are accompanying those different pots of money, so to speak. You know, each pot of money has a specified purpose. This, the nature of this expenditure, um, lends itself nicely to the very nature of the school construction funds that have, you know, were a bit of, not a surprise, but they were they're renewed this year in this budget. They've not been part of the operating budget for many years. You know, so in that sense, it's it's not a surprise, but it is new, a new source of funding for you to use and leverage. Okay. So I guess it's bottom line, I'll speak, you know, Dr. Boyd, um, just I'd like to know where that money is coming from. I mean, so we're moving different things around. So ultimately, where does it come from? Because what that my understanding from the budget was that the construction funds were already allocated to different things in the budget. So if we don't have to pull it from budget items, it's just going to come from ESSER instead. I mean, I like that just written. So it's very clear what we're approving before we approve it. I appreciate that. Dr. Boyd, is this time sensitive? 
No, we can hold on until next next uh, board meeting. Okay. All right. Any further questions? Uh, excuse me, Manager. If we've already answered all the questions, this why wouldn't we vote on this one? I mean, yeah, I'm I'm fine with it. Mr. Rolls, did you want to look at it some more? Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, I mean, the questions I just asked, I would like to get to that. I, mean, I think it's more important, $200,000 in the milk machine that we're waiting on for $4,000. Yeah, I understand. Okay. But but it's expedient that we get this started and underway because it's going to disrupt the school environment. Mm -hmm. But you're not talking oh, into sorry. it. <laughs> I said it is expedient that we get this under underway. I will speak loudly. Thank you. Because... It disrupts the school process, and this, the sooner we can get it started, the sooner it can be finished so that students aren't disrupted, nor the educators. So I think we should proceed. And I would agree with that. Um, these are, you know, uh, for right at the, as we, for those of us who've been on the school board, right, like this, these sorts of requests do come to us, and it is, you know, you know within the authority of our superintendent right to make the decisions that make make sense right and come to them come to us with recommendations so i would entertain a motion of um one of well, the may I'll add, so i'll see our process speaking of process is that we have discussion items and then we they go to action the next meeting so we have time to look into these things not make a hasty decision it's not written in stone oh, yeah i think you have a point mr Rolls. i guess what i was saying is I kind of see what Ms. Hawk was saying is that this is something that might be expedient to get started on, but still have those questions that you're asking answered in, on the next meeting. Um, but I, I, you know, in other words, I don't see the reason to stop the um, uh, emotion and wait for that because we're going to do this almost no matter what. But the questions you're asking are very important. So I guess what I'm saying is we can still get those questions answered, but we're going to do this almost no matter where the funds would come from. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we could make a motion, but still make sure that Mr. Roll's questions are answered because they're very valid questions. Mm -hmm. Certainly. All right, I'll make, <laughs> all right, I'll make the motion. Um, I make a motion that we approve. I'm going to mess up the uh, amount of money here. I make a motion that we approve the, um, what's it called? The uh, replace variable air volume VAV dampers at King George elementary um, with the cost not to exceed $210,000. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? I think we had it. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye, motion carries. All right. all right, thank you. All right, next up we have our policy manual updates for discussion this evening, so I'll walk through them. Um, please interject when you have a question or a comment. So first, for consideration is policy CBCA, disclosure statement required of superintendent. Policy CF, school building administration. Policy EBBB, personnel training viral infections. Policy EEAC, school bus safety program. Policy GBI, staff gift and solicitations, policy IEC, Bill of Rights of the Constitution of the United States, policy IGAH, Family Life Education. So I'll have a question about that. I did see, um, I believe, um, another question was asked, uh, Dr. Boyd, about the review of that policy, um, or of our, of our um, I guess, our, our Family Life Education plan or program um and did i see that it was last reviewed in 2017 that was my original assumption i did speak with mrs fisher this afternoon and she actually said it was 2019 that it was last reviewed oh really okay because I, I thought we had asked this question last year and it had been like eight years or something but it was more recent than that it was 2019 is what she told me this year okay all right thank you yes ma'am all right policy igbb programs for gifted students All right, um, policy IGDA, student organizations. And policy KGA, sales and solicitations in schools. 
All right. Well, without further ado, that wraps up our policy manual updates. So I imagine we'll see those at our next meeting for action. Okay. Moving on to our information items. So do we have any committee reports this evening? Dr. Bush? Twice I've been doctor. <laughs> doctor, sorry, sorry. I don't know. No, I Mr. Don't have Bush, Dr. Bush, report. pick your pick. All right. <laughs> All right, Ms. Hawk. Uh, yes, we had a meeting of the executive committee of Chesapeake Bay Governor's School, and uh, we're delighted to meet with the new director of the school and make some personnel hires that are just so exciting that that is just a most amazing place for our students to be learning in both their settings. And uh, I wanna reassure people that our, uh, the site was not damaged by that huge fire in Tappahannock. So we are reassured that the site will continue to work and the governor will continue. And in fact, they're, um, they're, getting, their, their students, they're getting their students uh, ready for the, uh, introductory activities that that are hands-on and so exciting it's just good science happening in their hands thank you miss hawk dr cutright no report thank you all right mr rolls none all right i do not have any committee reports either all right dr boyd do you have a superintendent's report for us i just Really quickly, uh, the August 2nd school board meeting that we discussed having at King George High School, we will have at King George Middle School. I just wanna make sure that the board is on the same page with that. Uh, and just a reminder that everybody is invited to our opening convocation. Hope to see everybody there. Looking forward to that. We are gearing up. Uh, so that'll be next Friday. Okay, at noon, we'll be starting lunch. Uh, and then finally, really, I wanna just say in the same vein that I began this uh, meeting tonight, as far as our maintenance staff is concerned, all of our 12 month em employees that have uh, spent tireless days all throughout the summer, uh, again, sitting in this uh, different seat now, having a different vantage point, it's been quite amazing to see that the effort that goes in when uh, many of us are off on uh, summer vacations, doing a number of different things throughout the summer. There's a lot of folks that uh, are at the school board office, hiring new teachers and making sure uh, that our schools are ready to open in uh, early August. So I just want to make sure that publicly I say thank you to you guys that put in that amazing effort. So thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Thank you, Dr. Boyd. Okay, moving on to board comment. Mr. Bush. <laughs> you going, doctor. Um, before I get into my comments, I did from the last, uh, from the meeting on June 27th, I had asked Dr. Benson uh, a question. I just want to know if he has a response. Can I ask that now or is this an improper time? Sure. Um, Dr. Benson, I don't know if you remember, I asked about there was a policy concerning um, students remaining seated in the moment of silence rather than standing, and you were going to check with the VSBA about that change. I mean, it's okay if you didn't, but I was just a little bit concerned about it. No, I haven't gotten a clarification from it, but I will okay. go back and All right. and revisit All right. I know it's, it's kind of a big deal to me. I'm, I'd rather see them stand, but that was a personal thing. All right, um, well, yeah, I also wanna thank the maintenance department. Um, looks like most of them have left, but um, my goodness, they do a fabulous job. And especially, um, you know, all of the work that needs to be done over the summertime in this tremendous heat. So, um, you know, God bless them for all the work that they're doing and the way that you honored them, Dr. Boyd, thank you. And Dr. Boyd, thank you for your clarity of uh, especially talking about the, um, the SEL and the whole emotional learning thing, thank you. And thank you for being, um, uh, the forthright is not the right word, open, listening, not necessarily making any that you feel like you had to defend anything. You're just simply presenting things as they stand. And thank you for doing that. All right. Thank you, Ms. Bush. Ms. Hawk. I uh, wanted to say uh, thank you very much to our maintenance staff. They are there truly as the postal service is through hail and sleet and snow and slush and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and certainly want to wish uh, Knuckles uh, a healthy recovery from COVID because we're very dependent on him. He's got a long history with us. Um, I want to thank Mrs. O'Donnell for coming and, and making your request known to us. I, I don't know the outcome, but, but we'll certainly give it our, our best guidance. Um, I feel very strongly about 
uh, the SEL programs uh, because it, it's truly the the uh, climate and, and the atmosphere to allow our educators to bring students from kindergarten and preschool with the skills to be in the workplace. Um, and that's eventually the process that we hope to see from this side of the podium. We love being on the graduation stage and we love being in the football, basketball, hockey games. But in the end, our students need to know how to work with other people and how to get along and how to solve problems and how not to be a workplace bully or workplace harasser or all of the things that get in the way of production and an adequate uh, flow of our country. They, they, our, our armed services follow similar protocols, our educational services. Um, so I, I think we certainly, it, it certainly brings a good moment in time to look and see what's happening. But frankly, every day of our educators' lives, they're looking and they're watching and they're waiting to prevent an unhappy situation from happening. And so this gives them the wherewithal to do that. So I just, I can't feel more strongly about it. Um, and it's the basis of school safety. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hawk. Dr. Cutright. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Ms. Brady O'Dell, O'Donnell, I should say, O'Donnell, uh, for her public comments, and we'll certainly take your request uh, into consideration. And I'd like to recognize our new director of special education, Ms. Kate Howard, former principal of Silston Elementary, and our new principal of Silston Elementary, Ms. Sandy Eli. And just a reminder to the public that our board is seeking uh, input for the qualifications for our new superintendent. And please take a few minutes to fill out the survey online or pick it up a paper copy at one of your schools. Um, as Dr. Boyd has already said, there will be a public hearing for the qualifications for superintendent, August the 2nd, 6 p.m. at King George Middle School. And also it's already been um, said that the maintenance uh, staff do so much for our schools, cleaning, it's more than just cleaning, painting, um, mowing, taking care of everything that possibly could be taken care of in the school. And also I would like to thank our human resource um, staff that have been busy all summer hiring different positions as well. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Dr. Cartwright. Mr. Rolls. My colleagues have done such a great job of covering so many important topics. I won't repeat them, uh, except just to reiterate, uh, Dr. Cartwright mentioned that we're looking for a new superintendent right now. So thinking about that and just what it takes to really have a excellent division, I think along the lines of Dr. Boyd's comments about the environment that you feel when you walk into a building, um, I think it's important that we have just like a passion for learning all throughout our division, you know, starting with school board and uh, superintendent and passing it all the way down to the students to press that on them. And so I think, you know, summer's also a great time to do some reading and just continue with lifelong uh, uh, learners. And I think really uh, an important thing for uh, solid education is reading some of the great books. So I think it's gonna be a fun exercise for us to do and also to kind of show that spirit. If you're willing, I'm just inviting you all and Dr. Boyd as well, maybe at a future board meeting, uh, we bring in one or two of our favorite books just to share a little bit about it during comment period. And I will ask that it not be the next regular meeting since I won't be here. I mentioned that last time. I have to, I have to miss for uh, illness in the family. So if we could plan, perhaps if you're, if you're willing for the second meeting in August to do that, give us a little time to think about it. That's, those are my only comments. All right, thank you, Mr. Rolls. Um, so I would like to start by um, also thanking Ms. O'Donnell for coming this evening. Um, I can imagine your frustration buying a house um, in King George to find out you're going to Westmoreland schools. Um, so I guess I would like to ask Dr. Boyd, could we re get a review of that policy at our next meeting, um, understand how it came to be, what's involved with it, why it exists? Um, 
um, and just add add it to our policy updates if, if we have some next week to review. Yeah. All right, or at our next meeting. Okay. So, all right, certainly. Um, I do want to thank all those who made it happen, Dr. Benson, Dr. Boyd, um, whoever else I'm missing, um, but for the successful removal of the trailers at Potomac. So I know that's been a long time coming um, and the property looks great without them. So thank you all for making that happen. Um, I know that'll be a good, clean start for the year. And uh, Dr. Boyd, thank you for the invitation for to the convocation next week. I look forward to attending. And um, I know everyone, maybe not my son, but everyone, I know folks are looking forward to the return to school um, in two weeks. So anyway, I know we've got a lot of good stuff coming up. So, so thank you to all. And that is all I have. So at this time, do we have a motion to go into closed session? Your mic. I thought I did not do much for that. If you just leave it on, Ms. Hawk, yes, ma'am. You, then you don't have to worry well, about I'll, it. I'll have to stop murmuring to Mr. Bush. That'd then. be advisable too. All right. Pursuant to state code section 2.2-3711.A.1, for the purpose of discussion, consideration of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, substitute, stipend, retirements, and resignations of employees of the school board, and for discussion of specific employees of the school board, specifically the evaluation of the division superintendent. I move that we enter closed session. Do we have a second? I second that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye, motion carries. We're now in closed session.
pursuant to state code section 2.2. Oh, you already didn't read that one. Okay. For the purpose of discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Got it. I move that the King George School Board return to open session and certify that pursuant to the state code 2.23712D, only public business matters lawfully exempted from the open meeting requirements under this chapter and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered in the meeting by the public body. Second and certified. All right, second and certify. <laughs> certify. All right, certify as well. All in favor say aye. 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 Your votes aye. We're now in open session. Do we have a motion to approve personnel as presented? I move that we approve the personnel as presented. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Your votes aye. Motion carries. So we have a motion to adjourn. Move we adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye, we are now adjourned.